This is the new look of the channel. Uh, hopefully you guys like it. The lights, yeah, they may, they may change, they may not. They may change color, but I don't think I will. But what you guys did, you got us to a thousand subscribers. We hit 1,000 subscribers, guys. Thank you so much for that. That is amazing. You guys rock. Thank you. It's amazing feeling to hit to 1,000 subscribers. I've been waiting so long to get there. It's taking so much time to build this up to that point. And we're still moving forward, slowly plucking away at it, getting a little bit closer and closer each day to the next level. And the next level, I don't have a number. I, I don't want a number. My number going into this when I started was, I want to hit a thousand. I want to hit, I want to get to that monetization point where I can monetize my channel and get to that point. And in the last three years, I've done it as a side hobby. I've done it just, just, just doing it. And my advice to anybody wanting to try and do this is to just go out and do it. It's not an easy task. It can be very challenging at times but pretty much I've always enjoyed every part of it. It's the next thing you see coming along and you, you learn about it and you move forward and it's just one step after the other. The first thing you gotta do is put a video out. And if you're struggling with that, all I can say is just, just get it out. Make it about something, anything. Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Get something put out. I am really have enjoyed this process and this time getting to this thousand subscribers. It's been just awesome that I got here. So a little bit of story time. When I posted my first video in regards to where the channel's at now, and that was the Milky Way shoot me and Daniel did uh, back in August of 19. So August, 2019, me and Daniel went out and shot the Milky Way. I just bought the A6400 for more of a video centric position on my hobby. I had been shooting a lot of photos, been doing a lot of photo work with the cameras, never used the A7R2 for video much. And I had the A6000. And the A6000, I wasn't, wanted to start doing more video. I was limited to 4K being only on the R2 and I wanted to be able to do more. So I decided to sell the 6000 and bought an A6400. It was an open box sale. Go over and talk to the guy and he goes, well, if you sign up for a credit card, you can get an additional 40% off your order on anything open box. I was like, I'd just been over at the camera counter and they had an A6400 open box with the 18135 and they had an A7S II there, open box. That was very open box, just a camera body, no battery. It was it was a clean camera. The sensor was clean. There was no body cap on it, nothing, just a body. That's, that's cheap. <laughs> that's the other way, way to put it. So I was able to buy, oh, I had the receipts. So as I look for this, I'm gonna tell you, the idea of YouTube had come along a while ago and I thought it'd be fun to do it, you know, and, and put videos out and make videos. And I was starting to watch a lot of YouTube videos. And this is about 2015, where a lot of creators were starting to put videos out. And, you know, I found a few creators that I started following and I really gravitated toward the camera section. Now I've always been a Sony fanboy. I've always had Sony equipment, as you can see here on the wall. I've got my Sony televisions. I've always had Sony my entire life and always liked the idea of cameras. I've always taken photographs in the past. I've always liked taking digital photos of people and gifting prints to them. I and mean, it's an amazing feeling to gift a print to somebody of them or, or whatever. So I've, I've done all that in the past. And these are a couple of the photos I've, I've taken and, and gifted, but I've always liked the DSLR style camera. And I've wanted to, I've always wanted to get 
camera with interchangeable lenses. And, and when my daughter was born back in 2013, we were looking at cameras. Me and my wife wanted to buy a nice camera to have. And I'd had a Sony 707 for quite a while. And now it's an amazing camera for back in the day. I mean, five megapixels, laser grid, autofocus system in the dark. I mean, the thing was, was awesome. And, but I needed a, a more, a little bit more modern camera. So I was looking at the HX300 with the high zoom lens or the A3000 with this interchangeable E-mount on it. And though, you know, the, the, I, I've known about the E-mount system. I've known about the little NEX cameras and they were all very fascinating to me, but I never, never spent the money or the time to actually go and get one. Me and my wife, we just got married in 2012. Daughter was on the way in 13. I wanted to get a camera. So I'm looking for a camera. And we land on the HX300. Nice high zoom camera. Moved forward a couple of years. Ended up out here in Texas in 2015. They had at the Target an A3000 on display, but I bought an A3000 with the 1855 APS-C lens in a kit. And I was hooked. I mean, I had the 707 before. I had a 770, a D770 Sony camera way in the way before that, that I had sold. But that camera was like a full manual control digital camera from Sony. It was a really nice camera for the day. I never dove in and grasped photography, really. I mean, I, I kind of knew about it. I, I was an auto shooter. That's what I did. When I picked up the A3000, it was just like pfft, I was learning photography and doing everything I could to learn everything I could about it. Watching guys go on these photography adventures and just saying, oh, it's so much cool to do that stuff and just and, and do it. And I, so I had the thought, you know, I'd like to maybe do YouTube, but it, it's, a, it's getting started with it. And I wish I had started it when I first bought the first camera, you know, like I wish I had done it. And this channel was based back in 20, uh, maybe 2011, I think, because I put some videos up on my motorcycle for sale, just showing it. And that's where I found you could pl platform out of it. But I, I kind of knew about it, but I wasn't like involved with it. And it definitely wasn't involved nearly as much as it is now. Back to 2015, I've got the A3000. I'm learning the hell out of it. I've got lenses now i'm trying to figure out what lenses i want you know i'm trying to figure out oh i'd be really nice to shoot 1a i even you know got daniel hooked into it and daniel i guess it had some photography background himself had this this camera and oh i bought a pj 790v video camera because i had the kids they were little babies i wanted to have a nice video camera so i bought the, the pj 790v and that was a really badass video camera for video unless i check myself again a little bit Video, I've always been interested in video production and video work. I actually did it in high school for a brief period. In fact, my first video camera was a Sony 8mm camera that my dad had found at a pawn shop. It had the big aluminum case. I can, to this day, can't find the model number of that camera. So if you guys know of any old Sony 8mm video cameras, like shoulder rig style cameras, you know, I sold it a bit at some point on eBay and I moved up to a Hitachi eight millimeter camera. It might've been high eight. This would have been about 98, 99. I had this Hitachi and it was a weatherproof camera. So you could like go out in the rain and shoot with it. It was freaking awesome. Um, I wrestled in middle school. And then I, when I got to high school, I didn't want to wrestle. I wasn't a good wrestler. Just, I just never, never grasped it. I was, I'm not athletic like that to, to really be challenging or do that kind of stuff. So anyways, the opportunity came up where I was able to film them. And so I was traveling with the team filming their matches so they could go back and review their matches and do that kind of stuff. I, I'm, I wish I could find that tape too, because I've got some footage of that. Maybe by the time I'm editing this, maybe I'll find one of those tapes and show you the footage I got. Cause I got a guy breaking his leg <laughs> um, on my, um, on our team. But anyways, I did that and had that camera, but I never really took it out to experiment with filmmaking or do anything like that. And I had filmed for my dad when he he was making these trials videos. I had filmed back on the mini DV days. So I've always used video cameras. I've always been around them. My dad had these really nice video cameras back growing up in the 90s when, when we were kids. And always been around the stuff. So just kind of in me. When I got the 790V, I tried making a YouTube video about the fish tank I was doing. I thought, well, it'd be cool to build a, a fish tank. I wanted to do a saltwater tank. I had this new house, me and my wife had just bought, built, and we put a nice, big, beautiful 60 gallon saltwater tank in there. And I wanted to do a video about that. And I just never, time, just never got to it, never got got going with it. The fish tank became more of a hassle than a, than a hobby. So, you know, I just never did much with it. But the A3000 kind of stuck with me. It was really just, I was 
I was playing with it and using it and learning it and wanting to get more. And I wanted to be able to shoot that F18 and I wanted the big giant glass and the big lenses and I wanted to get into all that stuff. And so I just dove head over heels just deep into this hobby and just just kept going with it. So eventually after the A3000, I bought the A6000 that Christmas after just barely a year of having the A3000. I had a new A6000 two lens kit. So I had the 16 to 50 power zoom, the 55 210. I had the 18 to 55 over here on the, the 3000 still. So I, I was set up, man. I was, I was king of the world with that, that stuff at that time, taking all sorts of photos back to where I was. That was when I flipped and put on eBay right away. Ah, all right, here it is. So back in 2019, me and my wife were buying a TV. So back to the story at hand here. In 2019, right before I started this channel, me and my wife were buying a, a new TV. I'm over there and the guy's giving me this deal and this, this sale pitch of the, you know, if you, hey, if you get a credit card, you can, with us, we'll give you another 40% off of our sale, which is already a 25% off sale. Yeah, so they had, they had a open item discount on the A6400. So the A6400 was $1299.99. So $1,300 for that kit. We didn't buy the 6400. It's $1299 for the camera, $260 discount. Pretty much already at a point where I was like, I'm gonna buy the 6400. It's, it's a good price, you know, a little over a thousand bucks for the for it. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. And then he's telling me there's a sale of like, if, if I, they had the 25% off open box. And then he said anything else you buy open box, if you get a credit card, we'll give you 40% additional on. I'm like, but on the 6400, the additional price off was another $415.99. I got the A6400 in 2019 for 623 bucks. But now he said, anything else I buy that day, on that day with that credit card, I would be able to get additional. Well, I'm looking at this A7S II sitting here in the cage also. And mind me, this was just the bare bones body. They had that one. So at the time, the A7S II was twenty three ninety nine. This was an open box item with just the body, not a lens cap, no body cap, no battery, nothing. This camera, the A7S II, was nine hundred sixty dollars off on the open box already. This is before they cracked down. Sony, I think it was Sony that cracked down on the open box deals that Best Buy was handing out on these cameras. When the A7S II was twenty three ninety nine. Minus nine sixty open box discount. Then they gave me another fifty percent off of it. I was $719 off again. I paid $720 for the A7S II and $624 for the A6400. So I bought both of those at a total grand price out the door with tax $1451. And I had the full kit. I mean, I had the 6400, I had the A7R2, I had the A7S II now. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Then it dawned on me, my wheel and deal method. I'm like, I could literally have these cameras for free right now if I sold one of them. So anyways, me and Daniel go on this night venture. We were like, we're gonna go shoot the Milky Way. We went out and did this shoot. So I had this whole idea, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a video. We're gonna do, you know, a YouTube adventure out of this thing. So I filmed it all and I wanted to test which camera is gonna work better for me. And I gravitated naturally to the A6400. It just was a better camera than the A7S II to me. It was it was better video centric. It just worked better. The A7S II was good, but it wasn't. I, I, I honestly I barely touched it, and I, I, I was more pumped on the A6400. Just naturally, just wanted to use that camera and, and and film with it. So it had the flippy screen. I was trying to do the vlog thing. I was trying to me and Daniel were vlogging in the car. I mean, we'll put it all. It's all going to be in here probably. So it's looking back. Don't forget us, our exit here. Were you forgetting? No, I wasn't fucking okay. forgetting. All right. oh, Jesus. <laughs> we're talking, trying this vlog shit out. I, you don't even know where we're going, so don't even. I know we're hitting 118 South. That's why I said 118 South, and I knew we were coming up on it. We've been you on the didn't even realize we passed the Chevron. No, I did not realize we passed the Chevron. We've done this one time. I've done it like 10. None of it made it in the video because it was just like, ah, oh, it's just, you know, it's the first thing. Like when I was making it, I'm like, I'm going to put this on YouTube and just, just for us to look at. But, you know, the idea was I'm going to, I want to start doing YouTube maybe, but whatever, I'll just put it up there for fun. And uh, that way he could see it, you know, family could see it. So 
you know, I start the process. I started editing the video. I start putting it together, started to make the video. That night shooting, I got very little video footage with the A7S II. I used it a couple times and was playing around with it. I didn't know it. It seemed like the autofocus sucked in it. Like I was like, this thing doesn't work at all. Uh, low light was okay. I mean, I was getting grainy images still. I wasn't really like, I didn't learn the camera. I didn't spend the time with it. And I just, I, in my mind, I'm thinking be cheap. Don't waste money. I can sell this A7S II and pay for both of them and be free and clear with my A6400. Or I, I was just going to sell the A7S II. So I put it on eBay and put it in a little nice little kit, sold it. Made enough money to pay off the whole package deal at $14.51. Paid it all off. My total savings that day was $23.55. Going back to story at hand, I put that video up. That's my very first video where uh, we do the night sky adventures and we call it Seeking Darker Skies. And then we've made a little series out of it. Been wanting to continue that series. And that's just another thing with time and time. <laughs> Basically not being able to go and do it. Going, looking back on it all, that was the first video. That's where it came from. That's where this journey started with YouTube and and and, and the, the journey it's become. So I I made that video and then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. You know, I, I can I can do YouTube. I can do it. I had some new equipment. I've got a small rib cage for it, got the glass screen protector. And I thought I'm going to make a video about that, putting it on the camera, working through it. And that's what I did. And the rest is history at this point. I mean, I kind of made this itself my promise though. I said, I want to get to a thousand subscribers, that thousand, and I'm going to build me a YouTube studio in my attic and I'm going to try to do this as a full-time deal for me. You know, it's what I want to do. Put the effort in and I started making videos and starting to make, you know, tweak it. And I spent a lot of time like setting up the studio every time. And it just became, you know, it's quite the chore to set this up every time. And eventually I moved into this office space or this room, which is our old master bedroom, it just worked out, you know. Me and my wife agreed this would be a better fit for us. And so this is what we did. We So I've got this larger room in the corner of the house that's my YouTube studio. But the, I, I made myself a promise, and I laugh back at it now because it's still not going to be possible. But I said, I'm going to build me a YouTube studio in my attic. Let me, let me show you my attic. All right, don't judge me, guys. This is my attic. So it's about 600 square feet up here. This is the space I want to turn into a YouTube studio eventually, as well as some extra storage space other than just the attic space. So like air conditioned, heated, climate controlled storage. It's a disaster up here right now. Uh, I'm not a hoarder. I, I just, this is all, this is the last 20 years of my life, my wife's life, our kids' lives all accumulated in this area if we need something we come get it up here we try to shop up here instead of you know going to the store but anyways i've got just you know a lot of it's just empty boxes like all my tv boxes i got um car parts i've got childhood stuff i just it's just random stuff you know i got legos back here i got totes of christmas lights I've got all the Halloween stuff back here. There's just a lot of different things up here just taking up space. Come up here, I could probably get it cleaned up in a weekend and make it really nice. It literally was just a, a move in and dump it in here kind of situation. This is the plan for this, this space is I'd like to restructure the upstairs bedroom. That's the upstairs bedroom wall there. Kick it out a little bit, take away part of the room in the back where the door is and build a hallway there with the door still there for the access to the studio. This whole center section be like a studio space. This space over here, I'll probably just do, um, you know, actual attic space. You know, I'll leave it kind of unfinished and, and, and wall it off with a, with a wall up here. So I have a full subfloor already. It's a continuation of the bedroom. So it's a really solid floor up here. You've got lots of structural walls underneath it to keep it solid. I originally told myself if I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm building a studio up here. And that's how far away a thousand seemed. And yes, it was three years ago and I'd only lived in the house for about a year. I'd like to clear this out on a weekend. And the, the bad part about this attic right now is it's so hot in here. If it's 80 
degrees or warmer outside, it's about 100 up here. So, so to be up here doing anything has to be in the winter. So I'm coming into winter. I've really got to just crack down on myself and get this area cleaned out this winter. If I can get the area cleaned out and maybe work on it a little bit, I can start seeing if I can make this a reality. But it's going to be require, you know, insulating the ceiling rafters. Uh, not only am I, I I'm going to take away a bunch of attic space, but I'm really not because let me show you one cool thing about this uh, this attic even is my attic has an attic and that's about six and a half foot tall to the center i can actually walk down the middle of that beam i'm not going to get rid of my attic I'm, I'm, I'm actually just taking part of the upstairs away from the attic so yeah this is the plan hopefully hopefully i can make it work and it'll, it'll look look good when it's done but uh we'll see when that actually all happens it'd be awesome to do a build and take you guys along with it on that if i can get it cleaned out maybe we'll do something have a lot of room for you know a little bit taller ceilings and and i'd like to do that whole build and maybe just maybe if i can hit this next new goal of mine maybe i'll start really thinking heavily about actually investing the money in it it means i'm staying here at this house a lot longer than i think i originally thought i would be but that's what's the uh, that might be the thing that happens this goal my next goal and this is like i said that I think people have goals with, with YouTube. I think you have to have a goal and have to have a progress forward. And I think over the last couple months, that's what I've been missing. I haven't had a goal. I hit my goal and I stopped. I did that lightning video and I hit a thousand and it was like, while I was editing it, it I hit a thousand and my momentum stopped. I didn't have that goal anymore. It wasn't a bad thing. I hit a thousand. It's amazing. I hit a thousand, but I, I just stopped and I've been busy. There's no doubt. There's other reasons that I stopped. It wasn't just because I hit a thousand, but that was always in the back of my head. I, I, I've hit my goal. My life, I'm a full-time, you know, eight hour a week or eight hour day worker. I, I have a full-time day job and that job, there's been a lot of changes in the last two or three months there. So I've taken a new position at that job. And now because of that, I am only working an eight hour day. I don't have to work the 50, 60 hour work week I was while I was doing YouTube at night in the studio. I'm still going to be doing YouTube at night in the studio. That's not going away. But every now and then I try to get out and do a little bit of adventure or do some filming outside during the day. I try to get the time in the evenings to do this and I run into my own roadblocks. I'm sitting watching YouTube. I'm watching other creators. I'm watching people do things that I want to do instead of going out and doing them. And that's a tough habit to break. It's tough to come in here and do this and set this up. So I spent the last couple of months kind of reevaluating things, restructuring myself in this room. I've been, you know, as you can see, it's a different layout. We've got this new table. I'm going to be doing more videos at. I've got plans to build a overhead rig system in here. Hopefully we'll get that done before the end of the year. That's a goal. So going back, I'll recap all these goals, but my new YouTube goal, now that I've hit a thousand, I don't have a number beyond that. It, it goes where it goes and I'm going to enjoy the journey. I'm going to enjoy the process of it. But my new goal for me is to double my videos by the end of 2023. So that is essentially a video a week. And I, with a little bit of out of a month and a half buffer to knock out the other, to get me to 50. So I'm going to just say, call it a hundred videos by the end of 2023 on this channel. That is my new goal. And I've got to really step up my game to do that. And it's going to be a lot of work and a lot of time and effort. And that's where I've got to make this all much easier to do. Because once I'm set up and talking to the camera, it's easy to do. It's I'm getting better at it. I still stumble and fault at times, but I'm less worried about this interaction I had with this little device over here that is you. I'm going to start working on growing this channel uh, a little bit more now this next year. Focusing on getting the videos done. I'm not going to worry about the analytics. I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff. I'm, I'm watching my monetization still, just trying to learn it. I, was, I barely just became monetized. I'm still in the process of doing that. That's a whole other little thing that you have to learn to do. Matty Hapoya said it best. I think one of his interviews on his podcast where he's like, you draw a circle and you're in the middle of the circle. And your goal is to get to the edge of that circle can go any way that edge of the circle is the same all the way around, but you can go any way to get to it. 
I've always loved that analogy. So if I'm in the center of this circle and I go this way to get to that edge, I get to that edge and I see what's there. And that was a thousand subscribers for me. That circle was a thousand subscribers. And he says, but then when you get there, you realize there's another circle beyond that. And you go, oh, look at this. But then again, you can go any way to get there. It's all the same circle, but you can go any way around that circle to get there. And depending on how you go, it may take you a long time to get to that circle. I, I, I love that analogy that he used in that because it's so true. If you're somebody that wants to do this, you have to jump in the middle of that first circle and figure it out. There's no right way. There's no wrong way to get to that edge of that next circle. You determine what that edge is, whether it's 100 subscribers or 1,000 or whatever. I'll say this, in my journey, it took me a long time to get to 100 subscribers. I just making videos, and it was cool watching it. Oh, I got two views today. I've got five views today. And then you make a video, and it's like, oh, it's actually doing something. Like, this is awesome. I'm getting 100 views on it a day. And, and you know, it's going, it's in the 1,000 views. And, and that was, you know, that was fun to get to that point and get to that next circle. But my circle was a thousand subscribers and I just kept pushing and going and it's taken three years to get to that edge of that first circle. And now I'm there. I have a lot of other circles possibilities, I guess. I want this to happen. I, I feel good about this. I have good energy toward it and I want to make something work that makes this all work. So the only way forward is to move forward. That's what I'm going to leave you with. And I appreciate every one of you watching hit that like button. It's so important to growth in the channel and making things work. If you are a constant viewer of mine, I really do appreciate you. It's great interacting with you all in the comments. Um, keep them coming. I'm trying to try to do better. I, I'm really good about answering all comments right now. I'd like to try to be more active in the community tab. That's another goal this year. So let me write that in his weekly community tab updates. So third goal. And that should be realistic because I'm doing a video a week, so I should have something to update you on. Like this video if you haven't already because it's amazing when you guys do, and I do appreciate all the likes. Keep the comments coming. I love interacting. That's my interaction with you guys on the other side of this camera is when people actually comment. Love, love reading the comments. Love trying to respond to comments when I can. And subscribe, man. I mean, let's just keep the keep this, this train going. It's, it's slow, but surely it's plugging away and getting up the hill. And... I'd love to, to continue to grow it. I'm not, I don't have a number at this point. It doesn't matter to me, the number, man, I just want it to continue. I just want it to keep going. And the only way to do that is to move forward and, and keep making videos. So that's all I gotta do is make videos. <laughs> Should be easy. If you haven't already, hit that like button for me. Do it right now. And subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you on board and continue this journey. Any questions you have for me, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. I appreciate every one of you. And thank you so much for the time and the time you give me watching my videos. I really hope you do get something good out of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll talk to you later.